the laws in that town vanish for him. There's no contradictory laws for him. You can't make him observe the 9 o'clock curfew. You can't tell him he has to shut off television at 10 o'clock. You can't tell him he can't take a walk in the park if he wants. The king, by virtue of being a king, his own nature are his credentials. And those laws and all the officials of Petty Town have no power at all to stop him, to prevent him, to block him, to frustrate him. And they know it. We're talking about a very advanced stage, the fifth step, where you have the credentials which are your own new nature, in which everything is very quiet, and you can go into this classroom, or you can go out into the world down there, or you can take a trip somewhere else. It makes no difference at all whether they know you have the credentials or not. You are living them. You are them. You're the walking credentials. They don't know it. They don't care. They don't want what you have. But do you understand that you are indeed under 10,000 petty laws of your own nature. The, nature. the nature which is still struggling in its hardness on the first of the five steps. You understand you're under the laws of darkness. You're under the laws of contradiction, where you see something and want it. Now, you can't have it, and so you're mad. And because you make no effort to understand these advanced laws, these higher laws, you stay with the old ones and complain and never, never see that your refusal to go down all these steps, you never see that your refusal to advance is what is keeping you right where you are. Under all these laws, you are not, you are not going to escape the pain of them until you escape petty town. Here's where Petty Town is. This is where it lives. You pass, you yourself instigate and pass the laws that punish you all day long. And you don't see it. If you saw it, you'd start repealing those laws and get out from under their pressure and their agony. How nice to have credentials that no human being, no event, can revoke. Nobody could take it away. Your, look, your own mind, which was at first your enemy, your worst enemy. Envy, malice, stupidity, cowardice. These are the laws you're living under. How do you expect you feel any different as long as you are the way you are. You want, you want higher credentials where you can go anywhere and do anything and not be a guilty little neurotic wandering around, wondering who you are going to offend or who is going to offend you. You have such gossipy little minds. You don't care how you waste your words and energy. One little event, one little event can set you off and even harden your position in position one, the first position. <coughs> I said that if you're going to even go from the first stage to the second stage in sanity and certainty, if you're even going to go from the first to the second, you're going to, you're going to have to melt down. That block of ice can't move. It has to melt down and become water. Then it becomes fluid, and it can move to another position. If next you permit yourself, now listen, I also said there had to be shocks, great pains, great agonies, hell of which you know not anything. The shocks are available to you right now, tonight. If you learn to listen in a new way, the shocks are the truth itself. 
that's slamming against your right positions, so-called right positions. If you are not learning anything from me in this class, it is because you're in the right position, you think, where you know more than I do as to what life is all about. Well, too bad that that just fell against a pillow. A pillow in your sleepy little mind. You didn't hear me. You didn't understand it because you're going to go out of here the way you were coming in. Yielding to truth means that you begin to examine instead of complain. Stop right there. This yielding, this understanding the pain, understanding the shocks, means that you take a look. You examine what's happening inside of you instead of complaining, instead of accusing, instead of snarling, instead of hating. Talk about petty town. Talk about an accumulation of habits. This business of when you don't understand something and don't want to understand it, then you talk to either another person or yourself and try to explain it away. Have you ever noticed that you have never explained it away? You're not going to explain truth away at all. You're just going to get very, very weary trying. So why don't you give up? Why don't you give up being the smartest man, the smartest woman on earth? I am telling you, this is what you think. How come you know more than God? How come you know more than the truth expressed in this class? If you still suffer, you men, come on now. You men, you look around this room itself. You men. You look around this very room you're seated in and you see an attractive woman and you are in pain and you never notice it. I notice it. I know what's going on inside of you when your mind goes over to an attractive woman and you're looking at her from a distance. You women in your own way too, your self-centeredness ladies. I'm talking about catching yourself in the act, which would be the jolt, which would be the great suffering I'm talking about, which will begin to melt you down. As long as you love the pain of looking at that woman or of that object, and loving the pain of knowing you're not going to have her or it, as long as you love the pain, you are fixed on the first level, and you're not going to melt down, and you're not going to change, and you're going to be scared forever. Don't you ever turn your attention back to yourself to see what's going on inside of you at the time it's going on. All right, I give you an, an exercise for the rest of your life. At the same time, something is going on inside of you, thought or feeling, or even physical movement. You are to know that it's going on, and you're not to comment on it at all. You're to see it as if it wasn't you, because it isn't you. Don't you dare name it. Don't you call it you. Don't you dare say, I was violent. There was violence that took you over. It is not you, or you'll be stopped at the stage where you love being violent. You love the thrill of it. You may not hit anyone with your fist, but all the violence that goes through here, and it gives you all those nightmares. The king with the credentials can go through a thousand petty towns with a million laws. He doesn't even pay attention to them. You do because you want to be thwarted. You want someone to, to snarl back at you, otherwise you wouldn't have snarled at them in the first place. Now you've got a fight going. That's just what you love. 
If you love fighting with yourself, you equally love fighting with someone else. But you're just a little bit more careful out there because you may want something from that man or that woman and you don't want to destroy those benefits. There, there is a way to approach, to go through to the stage of authentic and lasting sanity and certainty. Will you be so certain of the position, of your position, that you don't think about it? You never question. There's nothing to question. There's no you there to wonder whether you're right or wrong. If you ever wonder whether you're right or wrong, you are wrong. Because you're wondering whether you are right or wrong, and there's no you there to be right or wrong. There are several years, by the way, I should tell you this before we stop. There are several years between each of the five steps. First of insisting that you're right, that's the first step. Then doubting that rightness. Then seeing, seeing that you're wrong and, and identifying with that, calling yourself wrong and getting pleasure out of that. And then the fourth step of doubting your wrongness. And the fifth step of not having any thoughts toward yourself, whether you're right or wrong which are your real credentials, come, then come into expression. There's many, many years between each stage, not just months, many years. And you had better get busy passing from the first stage to the second one, because you've got a long, long ways to go. And you don't have that many years left. If you're 18 years old, you've lived, if you're just 18 years old, you've lived a good part of your life already. It's not negative to say that. I'm not trying to throw a fear into you. I'm telling you that you have an opportunity. And if you go out of here and never come back, you'll never know. You will never know that you've thrown the opportunity away. Do come back and keep the opportunity alive so that the truth can do something with you and do something for you.